Hey guys, Crux here with Sin Shop. So I had today off from work, so I decided to spend the day hacking on Project Nomad here, uh, trying to get the motor controller set up so I can actually operate it via a microcontroller. And uh, call today a success. So I'll show you what we've accomplished. Okay, so here we have the uh, standard uh, wheelchair motor controller uh, we've hacked into the uh, critical control lines and bypassed the uh, safeties that, that basically make the uh, motor controller unhappy so let's see here when we uh, turn it on normally those are solid uh, the microcontroller in there uh, does a self-check on all the systems to make sure that's getting the signals that it wants and since we have disconnected some of the, well, most of the things, it's not getting the proper signals, so it's uh, blinking unhappily. However, that doesn't matter, because the only thing I need this for is to turn it on and off. Um, over here, we go to a, uh, basically an Arduino with the uh, Adafruit uh, prototyping shield on there. I uh, got the oscilloscope hooked up to take a look at the motor uh, driver outputs and then we have a uh, uh, we uh, nunchuck uh, remote so if you see here or you can hear here the uh, wheels are turning take you over to the side Forward, variable speed control, backwards, here's a position where you can see both wheels, so forward, there's going forward slowly, and then we can go backwards as well or if we uh, turn all the way right then one motor goes forward and one motor goes backwards if we reverse it the motors reverse directions as you can see there just by barely touching it And it looks like the speed we're going to get out of it is actually going to be faster than the original. Um, probably because the wheelchair controller over there, um, you can program those to like account for like people having like jittery thumbs or, or you know, not being allowed to go full speed of the wheelchair. Uh, so we believe it's been nerfed. Um, however, we still, the batteries are still, uh, we determined that those are bad and so I have uh, replacements coming in. They should be here Tuesday of next week if we are to believe UPS. And uh, so that way uh, we'll be able to get the full speed out of it. Right now you can get the full speed if you go where one motor is going. There's less draw and it goes a lot quicker. But as soon as we have both motors going, then it slows down because the, the, the voltage sags. So back over to our oscilloscope output. Uh, the traces here are at the, uh, uh, basically the, the PWM speed that we haven't had before. It's slightly different on the Arduino. Um, 
but it still works so yeah I'm good with that when I first tried this the uh, the PWM speed was way too much so the motors kind of made a singing sound uh, as they were getting pulsed too quickly but But here you see switching from one motor to the other. One thing I haven't done yet that I might uh, do, although I'm probably going to have to do it via bit banging or some uh, logic, is I'd like if I'm running at half speed where it uh, basically phase shifts uh, the motor uh, 180 degrees out of phase so that way we're we're only drawing from one motor at, at any one time um, and basically get a bit more power out of it at lower speeds of course at high speed that's not going to really matter because you know we're just pulling full uh, draw uh, on both motors. So just this. You see that we're at about 32 kilohertz, um, which is actually what the it's 31.25, whatever. Um, the Arduino is actually set to 32 kilohertz, uh, but there might be some uh, inaccuracies in you know, what the width of a pixel is. You know, the cat just headbutted the uh, camera. The cat is not a good camera operator. There's a close-up of the mess of wires we have on the Arduino, and those are going over to there. That'll be cleaned up on the production unit, of course. I also picked up a Pelican case. Uh, I think it's a nice design and, and a pretty good size for uh, remote control so we'll set uh, the XY control over here or maybe over here and then uh, the other side will have our uh, speed control um, so when we get the fruit rush batteries in there we'll be able to go a hell of a lot quicker um, but and you do have some variable speed control with the XY but if we knock down the max speed then we can use the full range of motion in the XY. Alright, so we had a bit of a setback on, a, on the robot project uh, and time crunch because tomorrow is DEF CON and we got to get this all tied together and working and running. So I hadn't been spending much time filming it, rather just working feverishly to actually get something done. Uh, the initial wireless solution that we're going to go with these parallax uh, RF transmitter and receiver modules. Um, the idea that these are really simple, uh, they run on uh, uh, 70 centimeters, uh, which is 400 and some odd megahertz. Uh, it's not a you know, commonly used band unless you're AM. Uh, so I thought that this would be a great solution because I wouldn't have to worry about the interference with anything. However, these didn't work in practice. All I got is garbage out of them, uh, which isn't going to work for us. So I had to overnight some stuff from Sparkfun. You see the nice red box here. Uh, we had some Zigbee stuff on hand. However, the we didn't have actually the Zigbee shields or 
the computer interface to program them, uh, or you know any of the shift registers to bring five volts down to 3.3 to engineer it ourselves. So I just overnighted some stuff from SparkFun and got all the parts I needed on hand to, to actually set it up. Uh, so that's what we have running right here. Uh, right here I have one of the, uh, basically the transmitter module. Uh, we have a uh, Arduino with the Zigbee Shield and a Zigbee Pro. Uh, nice antenna for some decent uh, power. These do 60 milliwatts. So we should get some decent range out of them. And then basically the guts out of a, a, a Wii uh, Nunchuck controller. Okay, so over on the other robot end, we also have another Arduino with the Shield and the Zigbee Pro and the nice antenna. Um, here we have a 15 uh, pin, a DB15 connector. Um, we didn't end up actually needing all 15 pins, but initially we were thinking that we are going to need like close to 12. Um, we could have probably gotten away with a smaller connector, but we got the stuff for this. Um, this goes into the motor controller and as I showed earlier we already did a proof of concept of getting this talking to that and controlling the wheels so I'll show you the system working So that is pretty cool. So, still have to throw it in a box. But otherwise, I think we're We've made major progress. Something else of note, here's, uh, here's our old batteries. Um, they were good enough to test with, but uh, they basically ran down pretty quick. Uh, so they're pretty much end of life. Um, we have the new batteries in there. And at some point, I'll probably open them up and show them to you. But they're in place now and they'll stay there until we get the robot built. So here's the debug display from our uh, the basically the receiver end. And uh, you see the figures going across. So the larger six digit uh, or six byte string is the packet and then it decodes it into uh, the left and right uh, motor values. So the basically the first byte is the uh, packet type, uh, next two bytes are the right motor, next two bytes are the left motor, and the last byte is a uh, checksum. So if it doesn't get uh, a, a packet that's valid, it'll discard it. The other thing that's neat is if it loses communication, there's a uh, dead timer, and so it will shut off the motors and basically stop the robot. So you won't have the instance of uh, the robot's been driving along and, oh, my transmitter crapped out or I'm beyond my range and I now have a 300 pound robot you know, creening off on its own accord. That's generally a bad thing. And as soon as communication comes back up, you see it starts getting packets. So this is just an example of yet another sa annoying safety interlock that this thing has. Um, 
So the red wire here is tapped into the 5 volt regulator inside the controller so I can power the Arduino without having to actually have a power supply uh, apart from the you know, two 12 volt batteries wired in series for 24 volts. Can't run that directly into here. Um, so I'm going to use the built in voltage regulator inside the controller. So when you power it up, you see the light sequence there and the flashing there means that the microcontroller is unhappy. So we bypassed just about everything that that is dependent on except apparently the 5 volt supply. So it senses the current and if the current changes then it will shut off as a safety feature. So have this little jumper here to enable and disable 5 volt power and we will turn it on so it's on unhappy but on and watch as soon as we put this little jumper in here that switches into the oh my god there's a problem shutdown mode error light just the current draw from on our Arduino and the well XB Pro so that's just a uh, another thing but if you turn it on with that attached it's happy you see little power lights there well it's as happy as it's going to get. Um, so even though we're not actually controlling this via the built-in joystick anymore, we still need this so we can physically power it on and off. Um, without that, uh, there would just be a, a lot more of digging into the microcontroller. Um, and eventually we might figure out how to get this out of the picture but uh, for now this can just kind of live inside the robot use a power switch and everything else is controlled remotely So there we go. It can control itself. Well, it can't control itself, but uh, it is remote controlled. And it will go really fast. I'm barely touching the uh, accelerator because um, when we we're testing it out in the uh, cul de sac, it would. Uh, it would take off so quickly that it would pop the front wheels off the ground. So that's quite a bit of torque. And we have here the finished controller. So it looks pretty good. Uh, ended up cutting a uh, some acrylic out with the laser cutter and uh, using that as the case. So uh, the original design uh, tried laser cutting the case there, but uh, it does not laser cut well. It more or less just scorches. So I think this looks pretty cool. Um, these buttons don't do anything yet. Um, 
mainly just because I haven't written any code to use them yet. But uh, pretty cool. So there we go.